Greetings Adventures, it's Lauren Gaming, and in this video I'll be covering the Domino Japanese livestream news that happened today on August 27th, 2018. There's a lot of new stuff, but before I get into that, I just want to thank uh, Craig from the unofficial Domino Discord for the translations, as well as the Damachi Memorial Freeze English community on Facebook. They are responsible for a lot of the translations I've been trying to get. There might be some stuff that might not be entirely accurate, but we are doing our best, I'm doing my best to compile the information, and hopefully... Uh, a lot of stuff makes sense to you guys, so. And by the way, I got a new haircut. The bangs aren't as long as I would like them to be. And I'm wearing my glasses right now because wearing my contacts too long makes my eyes tired. And I feel like wearing the glasses negates uh, my bangs not being as long. But anyway, I'm also recording this uh, with the uh, air conditioner being broken and me turning the fan off that's right by me. So I'm going to be sweating during this video, so forgive me for that. Now anyway, let's get started. If you actually looked in the Domino news section in the uh, app itself, you would have noticed that there was an announcement for an update that will feature the new rehammer, upgrade, and smelting features. Well, we just got uh, in the live stream what those are exactly. So, with the rehammer, you'll be able to reforge existing equipment for different passives. With upgrade, you'll be able to level up your equipment to increase their stats. And you'll also be able to do something called smelting, which ranks up the equipment to increase its level cap. Now I'll go over all these one by one, so bear with me. And this screen here is a sneak peek of the rehammer feature. On the left side, you can see the uh, passive skills that are on the, the old weapon. And on the right side, you can see the potential skills that it could have uh, on the weapon. So before, like, uh, let's say with the desperate Isis weapon, it could potentially have, like, uh, two 15% crit modifiers and like plus 30 strength and a plus 10 strength but let's say instead you got like just plus 30 dexterity no strength added to it and no crit added to it so with this you could just rehammer the weapon and potentially get uh, more passive skills onto it and this is a lot better than having to make desperate over and over and over again with the crafting materials over and over again I know I've made so many desperates in my attempt to get that double crit and uh, strength. So this is a very welcome feature and you'll have to be using the new uh, upgrading materials which I will describe how to get later on in the video. On this screen here you can see on the right that they're using these upgrade materials to increase the level of this spear on the left side of the screen. Now this is the 40th spear, uh, Finn's weapon, that's not too important. What is important as you can see uh, increasing it from level 1 to 40 is increasing its physical attack from 230 to 269. Now that's that's a quite a big jump in uh, attack power, so when this feature happens, we're going to be wanting to be upgrading our equipment as fast as we can because that's just going to improve our performance in both Record Buster and more games, and of course, any uh, PvE content that might prove difficult to you now. It might be a lot easier upgrading your weapons and equipment. And on this screen is a display of the new smelting feature, and this will be using the upgrade materials to increase the rarity of the uh, weapon or armor that you have and increase it by one star. As you can see the 40th spear in this picture is four stars. Using the upgrade materials to be able to craft it to be five stars instead, increasing its level cap by 10. So the level cap of your weapons and armor are based on its star rating times 10. So the max level that a weapon or armor could be is 60 at six stars. Now you're asking, well, how do I get these new upgrade materials? Well, there's going to be a new feature added into the game called Expedition. With Expedition, it's actually going to replace the current Rampage feature. So, and I'll be talking about uh, what's replacing a uh, Rampage for you to get those crafting materials. Upgrade materials are a different thing, which is what's going to be used for the new uh, reforge, smelting, and enhancement features. And this is the Expedition screen. And in this, it's kind of like in other games where you can like pick out different units to go out on a mission. So you don't actually actively uh, do the combat. You're just picking a group of characters and they go out and do this. It's going to take like an hour or so depending on what kind of expedition it is. And they'll come back with new materials. Now you can affect uh, the drop rates of these materials. As you can see here on the right side of the screen, uh, your drop rates will be better if you use a Lily, Jigisa, or Asfi. So, and those will of course be on a rotation so it's not always going to be those characters so if you have those characters uh, make sure to use them and uh, I guess if you don't have certain characters uh, leveled up make sure they are because you do have a chance to fail these expedition quests but there are ways to uh, increase your chances of it uh, succeeding but uh, 
on the second screen here you can see different rewards that you're able to get one of them you can see there you got five new upgrade materials you also get uh, XP books Iris and Hero Fallout, which we saw in that introduction picture right there. So basically, Expedition is going to be the way to get the upgrade materials to take advantage of the new blacksmith features, as well as a little tiny source of Hero Fauna, XP books, and Iris, which is always nice. Now, earlier I said that Rampage is being replaced, and you're wondering, well, where am I going to get the crafting materials if the upgrade materials are from Expedition, which replaced Rampage's spot? So instead of Rampage, we're going to be just getting a crafting material quest, which is going to be in the boost tab, along with the uh, Fulna, Exilia, and Valis quest will be in that same screen. And as you can see here, it's normal, hard, very hard, and extra difficulties. And of course, it's going to be like the normal materials are going to be normal, uh, slightly better materials and hard, best materials and very hard and extra. And uh, for the Moonbow gems that you uh, trade in for the character weapon materials in the exchange shop, I believe it's going to be like a similar case to how Hero Falda drops in Falda Quest. Don't quote me on that, I didn't talk about that, but that's probably how it's going to work. And uh, because Rampage is disappearing, guys, I recommend to do as much of it as you can before this update hits because this is actually going to cost you stamina, unlike Rampage, with, which uh, did not cost stamina at all. You just keep doing it over and over again without worry, especially if you had a good team that had like MP regen and AC regen and being able to just constantly do Rampage without having to heal your characters with that uh, three limits. Now you can see that normal costs one stamina. We don't know what hard, very hard, and extra are going to cost, but I imagine they're going to be more. Hopefully it's not like over 10 because we're so used to being able to do uh, Rampage unlimited times. So hopefully it's not going to be too bad, but this is the new way to be getting your crafting materials. And in other exciting news, we got a new event going on. Now I'm, I know I've been talking about like having a four star Lunar, an episode review part two coming out i'm still hopeful that it's coming out soon but it probably wasn't the right time to do it immediately after an event with ani and chloe it might have been like waitress overload if we just went straight into episode review part two but i'm pretty happy with the characters that we're going to get in this event as you can see we got tione tiona in dresses along with hephaestus and we're also going to get a free four star adventurer shakti or at least i think she's an adventurer doesn't make sense for shakti to be an assist character but it looks like she's going to be in a slimmer case with the uh, Aina, the four-star Aina assist from last summer event, where you'll be able to get her for free from the event along with all five of her bonds. It's probably going to be a similar process with the girl power. So I'm very excited that we're also getting a new four-star that's going to be plus five for free. That's awesome. Now let's go over the characters themselves. Here we have the new Tiona. She's going to be a balanced character, as you can tell from her 1100 attack. It's not as much as a physical character would have which would be around like 1400 attack. But here are her skills. Her special art is an AoE Ultra Thunder physical attack and reduces thunder resistance of your enemies by 50% for one turn. Her first skill is going to be a buff to all allies. It's a fast taunt resistance plus 100% and gives endurance plus 30% for four turns. Her second skill is an AoE mid thunder physical attack that reduces heal and guard rate by 35% for three turns. And her last skill, is an AoE High Thunder physical attack with a temporary strength boost. So as you can see, we're starting to get more characters with elemental attributes attached to their skills. And this time we're getting Thunder related characters. And one Thunder character that we had previously that works really well with this Tiona is going to be Tudel Fulvis because she also reduces Thunder resistance as opposed to uh, only Tiona's special arts being able to do that. So they would work pretty well together. As for uh, Tiona's skills themselves, uh, she has a fast taunt resist, 100% with an endurance uh, buff, and that's fast, so it's going to happen towards the beginning of the turn, which is something to think about. And uh, the reason for her taunt resistance is she's probably designed to counter uh, the four-star Gareth, the New Year's Gareth in Japan, which we don't have yet, because he's a bit of a monster with his taunt and being able to heal himself at the same time. Uh, we do have taunt characters in our game right now, which is basically pretty much the four-star Tione, from the summer event and there's also the three star Tione who we might see later on this week for reasons I will explain soon. As for Tione's second skill it's going to be useful against teams that are using Shakti and Photo uh, for that guard rate because guard rate uh, reduces the damage that you take by uh, 50% so this skill is going to be pretty useful if you think you'll be encountering lots of Shaktis or characters that increase guard rate and also healing. And of course your last skill is just a good in general damaging attack. Do remember that she is a balanced character, so her physical attack power 
isn't as great as a physical uh, adventurer would be, but do keep in mind that Tiona does have access to Urga, her character weapon, and that has the potential for 30% crit. And with these updates happening with the blacksmithing, we'll be able to upgrade the Urga's attack power even further, which means the crits are going to hurt even more. And here we have the new Tione. Uh, as you can see, she's a physical attacker with a very high uh, attack uh, stat of 1478. And before I get into the skills themselves, I want to make clear that the translations for special arts and her skill 3 might be incorrect because I've seen two different uh, translations floating around. I'm not sure which one's correct. I just used the one uh, uh, from the Dynamo Discord that Craig's uh, uh, moderates. So just keep that in mind as I go over these skills. But for the most part, the, uh, the attack part should be correct. It's just a secondary one with the boost and the, uh, the buff might be incorrect. So our special arts is an AoE Ultra Thunder physical attack with a temporary 15% boost and it also gives her HP regen and strength buffs an additional turn. And she gives herself uh, HP regen and strength buffs with her uh, later skills so that will just increase the duration of them so she doesn't have to cast them again. Her first skill as we went over is going to be a strength boosting attack. It's a AoE low thunder physical attack with a self strength boost of 75% the last four turns. Very similar to skills that uh, Honor of Secession Bell has. And her second skill is an AoE mid thunder physical attack, which gives herself a 25% HP regen for four turns. And that's quite a substantial amount because that's a fourth of her health. And her last skill is an AoE high thunder physical attack with a temporary 25% boost and a increase of duration of her HP regen and strength buffs for one turn. And again, like I said before, the special arts and skill 3 translation might be incorrect. Uh, when the day does come, when uh, the new characters come out, <laughs> make sure you look at their stats and skills uh, to get the actual correct translations before uh, thinking about rolling for them. And we're also going to get a new Hephaestus, a 4 star Hephaestus assist character. She has quite a bit of strength at plus 5, 560, that's quite a lot, that might be the most of any character. I want. I don't want to say that right now because T might have more than that. I'm not sure, but that's a lot of strength. As for assist skill, we only have confirmation on the numbers for what it is at plus five. It's a debuff of physical resistance of 15% and guard rate 10% to your foes. And uh, speculation number wise, I think at level 60, that's probably going to be 10% physical resistance debuff and a guard rate debuff of 8%, but that's just speculation. There's no confirmation on those numbers, but we do have the confirmation for plus five. So again, we have more characters reducing guard rate. The developers probably know like, okay, the, the meta in war games right now is to stack guard rate because it reduces damage uh, in half. So let's just add units that uh, reduce guard rate so that stops happening as much and there's more variety in the teams. Uh, do note that the Anya has a physical resistance debuff and it won't stack if you have a Festus out, so you're going to have to choose between the two. Uh, Anya at plus 5 will do 20% physical resistance debuff, and uh, depending on how you uh, value that physical resistance, you might want to go for a Festus or Anya. It's a numbers game, guys. It's a numbers game. And yes, those are the three characters from the event, and Shakti we don't have any information on. And we're probably not going to know what her skills are until she's actually out in the game. But I'll show what those are when it does happen. But uh, as for what kind of gotcha I'm expecting that we're going to be getting, since there's three characters announced and the fourth one is free, I think we're going to get a scratch gotcha, which I hate, but that's probably what's going to happen. I hope that's not what happens because I don't. I just don't like scratch gotcha because it's it's really gotcha on top of gotcha and that's no fun. That's no fun for unlucky people. But yeah, guys, look forward to the event. It should be happening on Thursday night. Also announced is a three-star war games. Uh, looks like we might not be getting a record buster uh, this week. We're just going to go into another war game period. But this time with the caveat of us only being able to use three-star characters. Now, like I said before, you're probably going to see that three-star Tione that has taunt uh, in this uh, war game here. There's quite a few three-star characters that I think are going to be seeing a lot. Uh, Kino from the event and Shakti, 3-star Shakti from the uh, Grand Day Eve event, we're probably going to see a lot of. As for magic characters, probably not too much of them because there's not too many good magic attackers that are 3-stars. I can think of like two period that are just simply magic attackers, which is uh, Lafia and Philbus, with Philbus actually having access to an AV attack. And Lafia, I think, is just single target. 
So I don't think we're going to see much magic. You're going to see a lot of physical attackers. But be on the lookout for that, guys. Three-star war gains. There's going to be some interesting teams. And if you don't have a three-star Shakti, I kind of feel bad for you. Because I think she's going to be an MVP in this uh, war game. And lastly, we have the login bonus campaign. We always have these with new events. This one should be starting on August 31st. If it starts on the September 1st for Japan, that should be the day uh, before if we go back in time to our period. But over the course of the login campaign, we'll be getting 80 Iris, 3 Hero Fauna, 200k Valis, a 1 3 star ticket in total. Of course, guys, any extra stuff that we get, I highly appreciate. I don't expect uh, anything from these bonus campaigns. They don't have to do that, but they do. And it's just great because it goes on top of our regular daily bonuses. But that pretty much wraps up everything that was covered in the Diamond Mode livestream. I'll be making uh, more content based on the stuff that I covered in the video when the updates are live. Like I said before, should be happening on Thursday night. And the day before that, Wednesday night, we should be getting the buffs to Anya and Chloe for, for their adventurer forms. But look forward to my upcoming content. I'll be going over the blacksmithing features, of course, and the expedition stuff. Thank you guys for watching this video. And again, thank you to uh, Craig from Down Memo Discord and the Facebook community. Links for those two will be in the description. And as always, guys, if you found this video helpful or informative, please give me a like and subscribe to my channel for more content. If you want to stay updated on what I'm doing, follow me on Twitter and join my Discord for any questions and discussion. And as always, guys, continue enjoying your time adventuring in Rario and the Dungeon. This is Lauren Gaming, and I'm signing out. And I'm going to turn my fan back on because I'm sweating.